Hello there, my name is Akash the Car, and welcome to my new series on creating awesome special effects for video games and film using synthesizers. There is a ton of information out there on how to create awesome stuff using synths, but none of it relates to special effects in video games or film. So creating things like sound design from Mass Effect or Transformers or anything like that, there's not much info out there. There's tons of stuff on EDM and dubstep production and all that sort of good stuff, which is great, but there's nothing related to creating special effects, one-off effects, whatever, through synthesizers for video games and film specifically. So that's what I want to cover in this series. We're going to start off with Native Instruments Massive, which is a great synthesizer. Many of you probably already own it, which is why I'm starting with this one. We're going to be doing Absinthe and Serum and a whole bunch of other synthesizers down the line as we continue. So we're going to break this out into different playlists, one for Massive, one for Absinthe, and on and on and on. And I'm going to show you how to work with these from a sound design for film and games perspective. So first up, we have Massive. I'm on Mac, but if you're on PC, this will look basically exactly the same. The first thing you want to do is when you open up Massive, is initialize the sound. So if I go to File and go to New Sound, that just sets the sound back to default. And what we'll hear is something like this. A beautiful sound, amazing, absolutely fantastic. We're done, let's go home. Well, if you wanna do something actually better than what we're hearing now, there's a lot of knobs and a lot of parameters that we're gonna to have to work with. And in the first few videos of this series, we're just going to cover the interface and the basics of Massive. So that's where we're going to start. Now, Massive is what's known as a wavetable synthesizer, a wavetable synthesizer. You've probably heard this term before, especially if you're into synths. And what this means is that it gets its sounds from a series of wavetables or groups of waveforms. So I'm going to explain what this means. When you click one of these pull-down menus on one of these oscillators, and an oscillator is just a sound source, you'll see a whole bunch of options. By default, it's on square sol 1, and that's what we're going to stick with. So square sol 1, what does that mean? That basically means that we have a group of waveforms that transform from square wave to sawtooth wave, depending on the position of this wavetable, or WT, position knob. So if I turn this all the way to the left, we're going to hear nothing but square waves. And if I turn this all the way to the right, we're going to hear sawtooth waves. But if I put this in the middle, somewhere in the middle, we're going to hear kind of a morphing of both, something in between the two. And I'm just going to hold down a key and play with this knob, and you'll hear how it changes from square to saw gradually. And that's what a wavetable is. It's a group of waveforms that we're basically triggering depending on which we want to hear. The position of this knob determines what we're hearing. So that's the basics of how we're generating sound in Massive. We also have three different oscillators that we can work with. And you can turn those on and off by clicking in the top left of each module. And you can do that for any of these modules that you see here. For now, we're just going to focus on these oscillators, and we're going to go more in depth in future videos. So first up, we're going to turn on all three oscillators. So we'll have three different sound sources playing at the same time. Next up, what I'm going to do is leave the first oscillator at square cell 1 and have this wavetable position all the way to the left. Next up, with oscillator 2, I'm going to click this pull down menu and go to electric, which I think is a cool sounding one, and put this wavetable position somewhere in the middle. And third, what I'm gonna do is take this third oscillator and switch it to, let's see, let's go to Squelchy. It's a fun name. So now I'll switch this wavetable position to somewhere over on the right hand side here. Now you'll see that all three of these are on, I clicked the on button for all three of these. And now I'm just going to play a key. 
So we have a much more complicated sound now with all three of these playing at once. You can also pitch each one individually. So I can pitch, and these are semitones by the way, so I can pitch this down an octave, negative 12, I can pitch this down by seven semitones, and we get an even more complicated sound. So there's a lot more we can do with these, but that's the general basics of how these three oscillators can work together. In the next video, we're going to go into intensity and amp and filters and how those can help us shape a sound. So thanks so much for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you liked it, of course, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. I put up a video a week on creating sound design for games or teaching people how to break into the game industry. And of course, sign up for my newsletter if you're interested in making a career in the game industry. If you're serious about this, if you want to actually get paid for what you do in games, let me help you out. I have a newsletter that teaches you how to network, how to find the best gigs, and on and on and on. So sign up using the annotation, the description below, or the card, whatever it may be. And of course, lastly, I have to pimp this out as often as I can. Watch my TED Talk. I did a TED Talk on the power of video game music. So please go ahead and watch that. Let me know what you think in the comments of that video below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.